Hello YouTubers, Buster Dundo here. The current time is 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Today's date, June 16, 2024. And today I'm going to be reviewing Other Side for PlayStation 4. So, as per usual, I'll be going over the good, the bad, what I would have changed, and my final score out of 10 and 5. So let's get this started, shall we? So for any of you that may want to play this game in the future, I will not be spoiling any major plot points or anything major that may happen in the story. So you'll be free to watch this review without fear of any spoilers. So with that said, let's get started with the review, shall we? Starting off with one of the good things about the game I did enjoy. I like the soundtrack a lot. Despite the fact that you can barely hear it in most cases, because you're busy focusing on what's around you. But when you can take a listen to it, it does fit the mood of what you're doing in the moment. Especially when it comes to boss fights. Now, without spoiling anything, the boss fights are hard. And you will have to do quite a few different takes, different approaches, and hopefully beat them. Now, for me, in my personal playthrough, Especially when it came to the final boss, it was very difficult. But the soundtrack did in fact help with strategizing in a way. It helped you think things over, try different approaches, and figure out what needed to be done and how you could go about it in the quickest way possible. And I to say, before the boss fights, the soundtrack did in fact help you up Soundtrack the game calm, you calm down a bit. But when the moments got intense, you knew because the soundtrack kicked up the damage. For me, it was the final boss fight that really pushed everything all together. When I knew I had him, I let loose everything I had. And the soundtrack ended pretty nicely on a good note. Also speaking of the soundtrack, I did like a few tracks, the ones that I did hear, however, since I do have the playlist on my YouTube channel now, you guys will be hearing the soundtrack throughout this video as well as future videos. That is how good the soundtrack really is. Moving on to the next thing I enjoyed about this game was, surprisingly, the limited amount of classes. Now without spoiling things. You get three starting classes, the Shield Bearer, the Soul Slinger, and the Blade Master. Throughout the entire game, you learn what these classes are capable of, you also know what they're proficient in, which really helps you to figure out who you need at the right moment in time. If you know the enemies well, you can put whoever you think is best for the job together. In most cases, the battles will be in teams of two, three or up to four except for certain cases in which case you'll get five but whoever you decide to put in the battle you know who's capable of what as the game goes on also expanding on that i do like the fact that you can in fact look up enemy behavior now i wish you'd be able to look it up in the end of battle however you can refer back to the menu for this option which is good because once you know how enemies behave, you can plan accordingly as the fight goes on. Moving on to the combat part of the review, I do like the fact that you have interruption abilities as well as reaction abilities. To explain shortly here, interruptions do exactly as they say, interrupt. Either during the enemy's turn or your own turn, if the enemy decides to attack you, and you interrupt, you can either land an attack or stop them from attacking you altogether. Whereas reaction abilities usually only trigger when an enemy decides to attack you, or if an enemy is moving towards you and decides to stop right next to you. In which case, you'll get to jump on them as soon as they get close, which can really give you a competitive edge in the middle of a fight. But be wary of this because not only can you do this, your enemies can do it as well. So you'll have to plan accordingly as the fight goes on. Now this next one can go either way, whether it be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your personal taste. 
However, I did enjoy the grayscale throughout this entire game. The only time red would really show up is if blood is involved. Which really gives the game something unique that not many games nowadays have. The entire game revolving around grayscale helps you really focus on not only the background and foreground, but also your units and how they react and interact with the world around them. Also, before I forget, the color red also symbolizes your units and their connection to the main character of this entire game, called the Mother. Those red scarves that you see them wearing are their connection to their mother. It really ties everything together, honestly, and I like the idea. So now that all the good stuff has been said, let's move on to the bad things about this game, shall we? first thing I didn't like about this game was the fact that you cannot heal during a fight. You can only heal before or after a fight if your units survive. This forces you to be way more cautious than you would think, given the fact that resurrection tokens, as they're called, are very rare and scarce and hard as all heck to get. There are missions in the game that will allow you to get more, but they are very risky and some of your daughters can die during those fights making the whole point of it boot. Another thing I didn't like about this game was how enemies can often push themselves closer to each other on the initiative scale. Now, for those of you who are uninitiated to this, in the game, there's a scale that goes from 0 to 100. The more actions you do, the further towards 100 you get, and the longer it takes for your next turn to come up. Now, enemies can... Use techniques that push themselves further back to zero than they are at 100, at an unfair advantage to you. But when you attempt these same techniques, half the time they won't work the way you expect they would. And it's very frustrating to say the least. I also didn't like the fact that some enemies can survive damn near death blows with maybe one between one and 10 health points left over. Whereas if you took the same amount of damage, your daughters would die on the spot. Now, it may have just been me on my personal playthrough of this game, but I felt like a lot of enemies could survive death blows that would normally kill my daughters in a matter of seconds, with just between 1 and 10 health points left over just to be cheeky about it. And then they turn around and completely decimate your entire team with whatever health they have left over by some ungodly miracle on their behalf. I also didn't like the fact that you are damn near always outnumbered in this game, and I am not kidding when I say that. Most of the time, you'll be outnumbered 2 to 1, and upwards of about 4 to 1. For example, if I enter the fight with 3 daughters, there's going to be anywhere between 8 and 12 enemies total, at bare minimum. It forces you to strategize around that, and hopefully be able to cover everyone's back so that no one gets backstabbed and ends up dying due to something unforeseen. Now this next one may seem minor to some of you, but to me it was an issue, a big issue. I didn't like the fact that I have to hover over the enemy and myself to figure out what's going on, and sometimes that wouldn't even give you enough information. Like for example, the rooted status was one of those statuses that annoyed me the most. Rooted means you cannot move from that current spot. You get rooted, you're stuck. Anything can attack you, you can react as normal, but you can't move. Meaning if an enemy is charging up a larger attack against you, and you're stuck, you either have to tend it or hope somebody switches places with you and takes the damage for you. And trust me, that almost got my daughters killed a lot of the time, and it frustrated me. Now my next grab is all about the bosses. Now without spoiling too much, I will say the bosses will pull a lot of BS tactics against you. And if you're not prepared, you will want to rage quit quite a few times. Now I admit personally, I almost rage quit a lot to these bosses. Because if you cannot prepare ahead of time and you don't know what they're about to throw at you, you can't see their telegraphs yet, you are going to want to rage quit. Because they pull every BS trick you can think out of the book, and they chuck the book at you instead. And you have to be able to react on the fly to whatever is thrown at you. 
Now, if you're over leveled, it'll be a lot easier. But if you're just around the level to get through the boss, or slightly under leveled, you're gonna have quite a difficult time. I will tell you that much now. Next thing you're done though is the skill set skills in this game. Some skills are very helpful, but others seem like why on God's great earth would I want to use these skills if they're not going to benefit me directly? Sometimes the skills will get you into crappy situations that you can't directly get out of. Like there's one skill that lets you switch places between two allies. If one ally is about to be attacked, your main unit will switch places with them and take the hit for them, but also lay a hit on the enemy. However, this can also screw you over if that current unit spot happens to get ambushed by a lot of enemies in the meantime. How did I find this out? Many times of trial and error, leading to many hours of rage quitting. Yeah, the skills that could use a lot of work, I'll say it like that. I also didn't like the fact that a lot of the better skills took health from you. I don't like the fact that some skills take health from you instead of just using your action points instead. Like, And the percentage of health that it takes away is just ridiculous. There are a couple of skills that will take up to 10 or 15% of your health. Why on God's green earth would I want to use this skill if it's going to take 10% of my health away in order to use it? That seems stupid to me. I'd rather sacrifice action points than my health points. And when you're in a long, drawn-out fight and you don't know what's coming to you next, health points mean a lot. At least by action points, you can wait until your next turn comes up. Whereas health points directly affect the fight altogether. Meaning you can win or lose based on whether you use certain skills or not. And if you use the wrong skill at the wrong time, it will screw you over. Now, what I would have done better about this game is made all skills attributed to action points instead of health points. That would have helped out a lot more. I'd rather have to wait a little bit longer than a sacrifice health to make those skills work. Given the fact that I don't really see enemies sacrificing their health for any of these skills that they use. Also, another thing I would have changed about this game or made better the fact that certain interrupting skills should be able to be used multiple times and not just once. For example, there's a skill called Dance of Binding that will allow you to cut off an enemy's attack and attack them directly. However, it only attacks the first enemy that makes an attack towards an ally. And it doesn't happen more than once. So if multiple enemies attack one unit at the same time, that skill doesn't activate except for the first time it happens. I also wish they would have run over interruption skills and buffing skills in the tutorial. That would have been a big help so you could have already been adjusted to it. Because to me, it took a little while to get used to using them and how they worked. But once I got the hang of everything, it became easier to figure out what to do and what situations to put them in for the best outcome. I wish they would have also gone over delayed skills, or should I say delayed actions. That would have helped a lot, knowing how to use those ahead of time. That way, if an enemy decided to use a delayed action, I'd be able to figure out the best course of action as quickly as possible. I also wish they would have told you how long a delayed skill took until it was used. Now, I know you can look into the timeline for this information, but it is not clear at all. Hopefully, they'll make that clear in the next game if they decide to use the same feature. And now, last but not least, my score out of 5 and 10. So starting off with my score out of 5, I'll give this game a 4 out of 5. And for my score out of 10, I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Did I enjoy this game? Yes, I did. Would I replay it from the beginning? No, no, I could not. Keep in mind, I did manage to fight in this entire game, which I dare say something at least. But if I had to replay it from the beginning, I wouldn't. This is one of those games that you play once, and you flatten the game, and you do not come back to it. Not to say that it's a bad game per se, but it doesn't have too much replayability after you flatten the game. 
So with that, we wrap up the review. So if you made it this far, I thank you from the bottom of my cold, dead heart. And hopefully, you'll tune in for my next review. So as I say this time and every time, Buster Gundo, sign up now. Be safe, be smart, be silent. For whatever's in the darkness, you might take up the light. Be safe out there.